Good morning, everybody. It is fight day for UFC 279. Brendan Fitzgerald here. Nick Kalikas and Yanni the Greek are with me. Now, normally we don't do this bonus edition of UFC on the line on the day of the fight. But also normally, guys, we don't lose the top three fights and they get all shuffled around and we have a new pay-per-view headliner and we have a new co-headliner. We have a new fight before that and all these weight misses and everything. And that leads to a lot of different bet possibilities so we wanted to let you guys go and you guys had so much main card action on the show this week that we wanted to let you guys go back in and really properly put out your one thousand dollar bankroll nick i want to start with you though i want to get just a bit of analysis on the top two fights i know yesterday you're in the books and you're waiting just like everybody else with what the fights are going to be but with business on the line for you so that you can set a line so that you can get a get a number out there. What do you make of Nate Diaz and Tony Ferguson? The line jumped all over the place when it came out. Yeah, a lot of people weren't sure what to do with this line. A lot of people had conflicting opinions, obviously, as well. So this was awesome for the action at the sports books. I mean, honestly, a lot of people wanted to see this fight for a long time. So I think a lot of excitement kind of went into this from the diehards. And then, like I said, a lot of people just opinionated coming and taking the Nate Diaz side taking the other side as well. So it, it's just been back and forth. I mean, Ferguson's always going to get that respect. And, you know, Diaz brings that Diaz army with him as well. So uh, there's been a lot of confusion out there, but there's been a lot of sharp action coming in both ways here too. It's been fun, man. I, I like it. Yanni, your thoughts. Yeah, I'm not surprised to see sharp action on both sides. Listen, this is what I touch on all the time. It's the volatility in the MMA sports betting market that makes it so attractive to wise guys because they're betting numbers. They're not trying to predict the outcome. And when the number moves this significantly, meaning when you could have a ticket with both fighter A and fighter B at plus money in your pocket, that's exactly what these groups are trying to do. And that's why you're seeing, I know a lot of guys that have both sides in their pocket as we speak. Um, and, and they're looking now, to see which way the line's going to sway, expecting more Nate Diaz money to come in for other scalps. That's what's mostly happening, at least the groups that I'm working with. I haven't seen a lot of real, real positions because most guys that got down early came back the other way. That's why we're seeing up, down, up, down, up, down, not just your normal steam move, steam move back the other way. It's been going back, 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 back and forth, almost like the stock market. That's simply buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell based on the volatility what the range is. Once you know what that range is, you could scalp all day. Guys do it with baseball all the time. You could determine that that uh, uh, range within a half hour of when the Asian markets open. And you yeah. could just sit there and scalp that range all day. That's been happening with these two fights over the last 24 hours. So be careful uh, drawing conclusions on right. where the sharp money is because it's all over the board at trying to get the best money down. In terms of taking a position on the fight, do you guys, in the lead up to the action over the course of today, do you have one strong side or another on like, I'm betting Ferguson because of this, or I'm betting Diaz because of this? Nick, do you have any strong position on it? I do. I'm going to have to take Diaz at the plus money, right? He opened a favorite around minus 155, and now you can get him around plus 135 out there. So, or I'm sorry, he's at minus 135 Ferguson. So you get him around plus 115-ish, I should say. So yeah. Diaz at any plus money. I think you got to chase a plus money. We talked about this before on the show on UFC on the line recently. There's certain fights that if you can get plus money at either side, that's where the value is. I think this fight is exactly a pick em. So if you can get even money or some plus money on Ferguson, you got to take it. If you get even money or plus money, I think on the Diaz side, you got to take it. So for me, I lean towards Diaz. I have a bet on this fight as well. So um, okay, we'll get to that. Yeah. yeah, we'll get to that in just a moment. Um, Johnny, I'm going to start with you on Kevin Holland, Hamzat Chimaev. He was, of course, like a minus 1150, 1250 against Nate Diaz. He opened at what, like minus 1000, and then he was quickly bet down. He's like minus five, 600 now. What have you seen with the line movement with Chimaev now? And not surprising because remember, the Nate Diaz side was the side getting the money against Chimaev. Even though Chimaev was the heavy favorite, most expected him to exit the octagon a victor, that wasn't the case at the sports books. And this really bailed out a lot of bookmakers, meaning they were going to be holding their breaths with that fight. If Diaz beat Chimaev somehow, some way, that would have been the worst outcome ever for sports books as far as uh, MMA outcome for them, the result. 
they would have been that one sided on Diaz. So for me, I have to know that going in that Diaz has such a strong contingency of fans that are willing to bet him at any price that more times than not, I'm not going to get the best of it. But in this case, it's a little bit different because you have Tony Ferguson another polarizing figure on the other side. So for me, I agree 100% with Nick. Uh, it's a dog situation, meaning there's a lot of uncertainty. We've had number of hours to draw conclusions. So have the odds makers, but their advantage is they have a built-in edge, a hold. We have to pay an admission to place a bet. That's the difference. So for them, it's an easy job compared to our job. And that's why I think you need to slow down, realize that there's a lot of unanswered questions. And if you're going to lay this kind of chalk, you got to be pretty certain. And for me, that's the problem because I know Chemayev, I told you off the charts, it's as impressive as it comes. It's almost impossible to fade him based on the data. But with all that said, I know this price is really high. And I always say I stick to uh, what I preach and I will not lay this kind of chalk unless I have such strong conviction. And with this fight being announced less than 24 hours ago, how can you have that? So right. that's my issue. Okay. We're going to go through the bet now. $1,000 bankroll on the show. We're going to get all your picks laid out, but we do it for real. So fights that were already picked the other day that had nothing to do with the top three fights, we're going to keep those tickets intact. Yanni, your first one was Hamza Chimaev parlayed with Jake Collier. So that now knocks down to a straight bet on Collier. Yeah, unfortunately, for all you betters out there, you may want to check what the rules are with your specific sports book. But I can tell you every local out and all, every book that I work with, let's just put it that way, has done the exact same thing with the parlay. They just knocked it down a leg. You'll see on your on your screen, it'll have a little X next to the Chimaev name. So you now have a straight bet if you had Chimaev parlayed with any other fighter. That's now a straight bet on that other fighter. If you had a five-leg parlay with Chimaev in there, it's now a four-leg parlay with those other four. You can't cancel it. You can't get out of it. It's locked in at that same price as well. Uh, so I'm on Collier and I have that whole 335 is on him. So it's a little bigger ROI if he wins um, because, again, Shemayev wasn't adding all that much to it. Nick, in the main event, you have a play on the main event between Diaz and Ferguson, as you mentioned earlier. I have to take Diaz here. So, again, with the way the bankroll is going to kind of play out, I'm going to go 111.25 to win about 122.38 on Nate Diaz. I have to chase that plus money a little bit. I think this is a great fight for him. Just imagine if you're Diaz, the confidence level you now have. You don't have to face a guy that's going to take you down, grind you out, and try to finish you on the ground. You're going to have a guy that's willing to strike with you. So this is a much more favorable matchup for Diaz, especially the Ferguson of late as in 2022. So I think sure. Diaz has enough left in the tank to get the job done. 111 for me to win about 122 on Diaz. All right, small sprinkle there, just over $100 on Nate Diaz in the main event for Nick. Co-main event now is Hamza Chimaev, as we mentioned, against Kevin Holland. It is five rounds. Nick, do you have a play here? I do, and I'm going to go fight doesn't go the distance. I mean, if you could find under minus 300, I think this line should be like minus 500 or even greater. So there's a lot of lines floating around there. I found one at minus 270. So for me, it's going to be minus 270. Fight does not go the distance, 270 to 100. This fight's not going. Chimaev's either going to finish him on the ground. If he doesn't, I don't trust him in round four or five. If he hits that, the scorecards or hits those rounds, right. I think that he's going to get finished either way. So this fight is not hitting the cards, 270 to 100 for me. Yanni, do you have a co-main event bet? No, sir. No, nope. Nothing on the co-main. Okay, let's go now. Does anybody have any action on Daniel Rodriguez and Lee Jing Leong? I do. Nick, Nick you got in on it. Yanni, I should say, most of your action was already tied up because of yeah, what you Yeah, I only right? have to uh, reallocate $215. On right, so we'll, we'll, we'll just go through the bets money, just to but... remind everybody. Nick, uh, give us your, your bet on Daniel Rodriguez, Lee Jing Leong. I got to go with Lee here, man. Again, the plus money. I, I think he looked good. I know the size difference is a little bit concerning because Rodriguez, of course, was fighting at 180, Lee at, at 170. But I, I'll tell you what, at the weigh-ins, the face-offs, he looked pretty good. He didn't look that small to me. He's going to be a little bit faster. Of course, he's got that dynamic knockout power as well. So I think you get two strikers. I think the defensive side of things, I think Lee's a little bit more defensively sound as well. And then, of course, the firepower. I think he's got the better knockout power of the two as well. So if you're getting two strikers going at it and I'm getting plus 135 odds, again, I'm going to split the bankroll up a little bit. So what I have left right now, it's going to be a plus 135. For me, 111.25 to win about 150 bucks on Lee to come through over Rodriguez. All right, there you go. Lee Jing Leong is the pick in that matchup. And he's the one fighting 10 pounds up. It was a catch weight for Daniel Rodriguez against Kevin Holland. So 
uh lee's manager put out a tweet there's one real gangster that's fighting 10 pounds up this weekend it's lee jing leong uh yanni you had macy chasson 100 to win 150 that's still intact and nick you disagreed you have arena aldana so there's some some differing viewpoints there on a on a main card fight yanni you, you still like uh what you like there it looks like nick's money. got the right side listen i i tell it like it is the market did not move with me i did not get down at a great number i took plus 150 you get plus 155 right now so it's not a good bet i'm hoping to be the product of good luck right now that's the bottom line keeping it real all right hundred dollars for nick on johnny walker taking that underdog shot against iwan kute laba nick Still yeah, like that I mean, ticket. I think there is some value there. You yeah, have to accept. I don't think you can lay the chalk again. I know there's some sharp action that came in on Kudalaba, like we said on the show, but I'm going the other way with it. I think where the price is now, the value becomes open on Walker, and that's why I took it. All right, and just to round out the bets, uh, early in the night, Yanni has Alatung Haley at minus 175. That's your biggest straight bet, 350 to win 200 on Alatung Haley against Chad and Helliger, and then Nick on early prelim has Melissa Martinez to beat Elise Reed 198 to win 120. Uh, Yanni, what did you do with your reallocation here of 200 plus dollars? Speaking of Alatang Hey Lee, because I had dug into that fight so deeply, I had another very strong lean, and that was on the round total. I expected it to be shaded incorrectly based on the recency bias. Both guys coming off that strong finish. But if you think a little deeper, you'll look with the Hey Lee side that four of his last five had gone to a decision. And even with the opponent who pre UFC, you see a lot of finishes there, but what happens is that step up in competition makes it a lot tougher. You see it all the time with these fighters from them smaller promotions. When they get up to that UFC level, it's a little harder to take out those opponents. That's why the, the inside the distance rate is so much lower at the UFC, believe it or not, than other organizations where their heavyweights are like 90% inside the distance. And we're still at like 65 over at the UFC. So it's that, 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 uh, competition level. So I'm going to go ahead and go over. It's minus 170. So I got to lay, uh, I believe, 127.50, excuse me, to win 75. That leaves me about 87.50 left. What are you going to do with that? Let's just empty the a, tank. A little dog, a little dog, a small dog, a little sprinkle on Johan Lainis. Okay. I, I think he's live. Uh, another spot where uh, he lost his debut to Green. I think he was a little overwhelmed there. He got a, a big win in Contender Series as a dog, and that's where I want to back this guy. Anytime I could get plus money, I'm going to look towards that. I, I think at striking, he's not at much of a disadvantage. At least that's what the data tells me. And it's the grappling that jumped off the page. Again, his opponent, small sample size of data, but still. So we're going to go ahead and take the Lionese side at plus 105, that 87.50 to win back $92. All right, that's the first fight of the card at UFC 279. Yoan Lanis uh, out of Canada taking on Darian Weeks and a little plus money there. Nick, what do you have left in the bank? Oh, you got anything left here? I, I believe that's everything. We're You're done. Uh, there we go. We did it, gentlemen. We got together on a Saturday morning, pre-9 a.m. Uh, Nick's family sleeping in. Yanni's been up for it since five in the morning to a college, college football, football NFL, and UFC all morning. And now we just have to wait for the fights to begin. Nick. Yanni, thank you very much for this thank special you. edition of the Chaos UFC 279 on the line.